Good morning, 8A1 and 8B4. This is Miss Lawson, and I'm bringing you your new um, week's worth of work. Actually, it's not just for the week. It's going to be for the next few weeks. It's your new scheme of work for the summer term based on home learning. Um, what we were going to do is had to change, obviously, because of you know the situation. But it is something that is it's quite interesting. It's uh, easily accessible online. Most of you, or a fair majority of you, are going to have already come across this book before. And that's okay, because what we're going to do now is going to analyse it, because you're coming towards the end of year eight onto year nine. And you're going to uh, approach it in a very different way. We're going to analyse it, be very objective about it, and we're going to look at the language as well as just the story. Okay, so just bear that in mind whenever you, if you've read it before, you have some preconceived ideas. Um, before we get on to that, uh, hopefully most of you have accessed the previous lesson where we're looking at your T targets for your assessment and you've spent 20 to 30 minutes uh, the best you can just kind of rejigging your assessment answer. Maybe you needed to um, put in some quotes, maybe you needed to, um, oh, what was the other targets, or oh, add context. And you just spent 15, 20 minutes minimum just to kind of do that. Again, there's no need to send that to me, okay? Um, I'm going to want to see it in your books when we get back. And I want to reiterate this point. We are going back to school, guys. I will see this work, whatever you're doing. So just try your best. I know it's not always easy um, working and learning from home. So just simply do your best. And if you feel like you can push yourself, then push yourself if you really feel like you can't. Again, there's going to be no backlash on that. I know that everyone's in different situations. I do know, you know, your year eight, and some of you are going to be making that decision, oh, shall I just play another hour of Xbox, or shall I just do that work? If you've got the option, and you've got the mindset, and you've got the, the time, do your work, guys. Um, it, it's going to benefit you from when you get back into school. Okay, so draw a line under your um, whole class feedback, which should have been dated. Um, and we are going to put the date today, um, and this is your new scheme of work. And just as we would in class, have a look at this. Do now task. Okay, um, have a look at the picture. I'm sorry that the um, picture quality isn't particularly great, um, but hopefully you can start to see the outline. You can see the mood and the atmosphere of the picture. Okay, so could you write a description as suggested by the picture and remember to include the five senses? Okay, so what can you hear? What can you smell? Um, <clears throat> can you feel the wind racing through your hair, for instance? Um, and don't forget to mention your sixth senses, that little gut instinct inside of you, that, that feeling inside. Imagine perhaps that you're actually stood on this road here. Um, I'm going to give you the context of what this picture is. Hopefully some of you um, already know what this picture is. Um, it is obviously the setting for the book um, that we're going to look at. So imagine yourself, is, uh, perhaps you're standing there, and just have a look around and remember to write, say, probably three or four sentences. Pause this video, go and do it. Imagine that I'm taking the register um, and just write three or four sentences, imagining, imagining yourself there. Um, extension task. Like I've said all the way along from the, all the time that I've taught you, I expect most of you to be pushing yourself as far as you can. OK, so I'm going to constantly teach to the top and see um, if you can if you can access that. Um, the extension task. So to make things slightly trickier for you, but I know that you're capable of this. Start your descriptive sentence with a preposition. So above, towards, amongst, beside, in front of. OK, so perhaps you're beside the tree. Or perhaps you're in front of the gates. Okay, you are not also allowed to use the word cold, empty, or eerie. Okay, all three very common words that I think you'll probably all go to. And perhaps you want to use something that means it's cold. You perhaps pick up a thesaurus or a dictionary, or just uh, maybe you could use some of your magpie books if you still have those, or just use Google and have a look and see what other words you can find. Constantly push yourself with your vocabulary. So take five, ten minutes to do that for me, and then you can then pause the video. OK, so obviously that picture was um, Auschwitz. It's the entrance to the concentration camp where this book was set. OK, so Auschwitz is um, in Poland. And the book that we're looking at is The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I know some of you have, like I said, have always going, already have um, read this book before. But we are going to really do it in a very different way. OK, and sometimes there's a huge benefit of having already got um, previous information about it or previous um, knowledge of the book because it means you can build upon it. Actually, sometimes it's good that you haven't. So whichever camp you're in um, is, is, is fine. Have a look at these three front covers. 
for a start. We like looking at the covers in class. Um, the middle one, I think, is probably the most common. If you do have this book floating around in your home, I think that's probably the most common one. Um, we've got the barbed wire and the stripes, which is of the uniforms of the, the people that were in concentration camps. They had to wear it. was kind of their, um, the way that they differentiated amongst themselves. So they were all put into striped clothing. Um, this one here is the most unusual one. But I really, really like this one. You've got the tall figure of the Nazi um, officer standing there with the two very small boys holding hands with their friendship. You still can see the barbed wire in the background. And obviously you've got the, the only bright um, kind of colouring on the front of this book is the, the red of the Nazi symbol. So really interesting to have a look at the three different covers i mean i mean lots of times people say that it's um it's kind of targeted at you know key stage two and younger you know what well, actually it's not you can get whatever you want out of this book so we are going to really pick it apart and really analyze it and maybe as you're older you can take things in that you hadn't taken in before as a little side note for those of you who are continually wanting more um, things to read and extension, have a check out John Boyne. He's, one, he's become one of my favourite authors at the moment. He's written a, um, a plethora of, of books and not just for adults as well. And they're not just um, about World War II. He's a fantastic writer. Um, so have a look at his other, his other work. Um, he's really very interesting i can thoroughly recommend um if you have a few pounds saved up because you've not been going out buying um lunches at school for instance and you know you, your parents say so perhaps you could find a book by john boyne fantastic author okay so how are we going to access this work um there is a pdf which will be sent to you it'll be going to be put onto microsoft teams for you i'm also going to attach try to attach on to go to schools sometimes go for schools and um, doesn't like the fact that it's such a big file so it'll be either in your inbox or microsoft teams on go for schools um there's also an audio book um i'm a massive fan of audio books personally it's a way that you can access reading sometimes some students prefer to hear the written words in their brain and then they can analyze it and take it on board a little easier if you are going to use the audio book please make sure you're reading along with the pdf at the same time okay they're supposed the audio book is supposed to support what you're reading i don't want you to slip back in your reading fluency i want you to make sure you're continually reading and preferably you would perhaps read it out to an adult or someone Perhaps you do have, you know, a younger brother or sister who's, you know, 9, 10, 11 um, and, you know, they want entertaining. You could just spend 10 minutes reading to them or, or to an older sibling or the dog, for instance, and just make sure you're practicing reading out loud and getting your reading fluency um, nice and, and, and high. Um, we're also going to do Seneca Learning. So alternate weeks, we're going to do um, work on Seneca. All of you guys, we've been doing Seneca Learning for Tempest, so you, this is no... Um, strange thing for you so alternate weeks Seneca this week okay you are expected to read two chapters the very first two chapters and then access the link for Seneca learning that I'm going to pop and go to schools for you okay there's no need to send me any work to me however if you have done your whole class feedback or you have um, you have done your do now task for instance you can always upload it to Microsoft Teams. I did send all of you an email yesterday giving you the link to your particular class team. I really want us to be able to start using that as a platform for us to communicate. There's even options we could do video calls on there and, and video lessons. And it'd be really nice if we could start moving away from individually sending Outlook and messages and actually get onto Microsoft Teams. Um, again, on there as well, I'm going to put all the resources on there for you. So should you lose the email, should you forget where um, things are, you'll always have the backup of having it put on Microsoft Teams. Um, and there'll be worksheets as well. So next week you'll have a worksheet to do. And again, um, that will be all on, on uh, Microsoft Teams. OK, and finally, um, guys, you know that I like pushing you as much as I feel that you are capable of and to really ex you know, push yourself out of the egg yolk. Remember the egg in the, in the frying pan? Now, I do understand that some people are in really um, tricky situations and learning at home isn't always easy. But I also do know that, you know, some of you are capable of doing more than you already are. So 
For those people that are emailing and asking for more work, there's an extension task for you. Um, I'd be really happy if both classes would be able to take part in the extension task for me. So, have a look at this quote. Some people make all the decisions for us. Um, it's said by the mother, page 14. Now, once, you, once you've read your first two chapters, you can come back to this. Write this quote down in your book um, and come back to it and we can explode it. Lots of you enjoy exploding a good quote for me. So when you're looking at it, break the words down. Use the explosion diagram that you should have in your book or you can find one online. Ascertain the word class, i.e. work out is it a noun or a verb, and then discuss the connotations or the feelings and the meanings of the word. So how does the word decisions make you feel, for instance? How does it make um, a little bit, and someone else um, feel, for instance, not just yourself, the reader as well? And why is it interesting that the mother says this? Okay, This is another further uh, questioning for you. You know, it's not said by a child. OK, and then why is this said at such an early stage of the book? Having perhaps read this book, you may be able to answer that slightly easier. Um, if you haven't, what kind of tone and atmosphere do you think this book's going to have? Having read the first two chapters and looking at this quote, um, what kind of tone does this quote set for the re remainder of the book? Why is it not said at the end? Why so far at the beginning? OK, once you've done that, pop that into your book for me. You can send a picture and put it onto Microsoft Teams. I don't ideally would like, uh, I don't really want to have lots and lots of emails with pictures this time. I want us to be able to try to keep everything centralised and localised into, um, into your books and into Microsoft Teams. Any questions, I'm always available via email or you can get onto Microsoft Teams. Am I pushing Microsoft Teams enough for you guys? I mean, come on, you must be getting the message by now. Um, you are at advantage that you already have your Seneca logins from Tempest, okay? There are going to be other year eights that are now having to try to deal with um, a login for Seneca. You don't have to worry about that. You've already got those. So perhaps you, it could be your task this week beyond reading. It's just to see if you can get yourself, on, get yourself onto Teams for me and say hello. I hope everyone keeps safe and keeps well. Well, um, the weather doesn't look particularly great today, which is probably more of a reason to sit in and read your first two chapters if you can. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, like I said, any questions, please just let me know. Okay, bye bye.